Hello, I'm Geeta Gurumuthi with BBC World News, our top story. Hello and welcome. European Union interior ministers meet in Brussels very soon to try to resolve the deep differences over Europe's worst migrant crisis since World War II. They'll discuss the controversial idea of compulsory quotas for 22 EU member states. While well, ministers hope for a consensus to distribute and resettle 120,000 migrants initially on a voluntary basis. But the UNHCR estimates that nearly half a million migrants have arrived in Europe by see this year already. And of that number, almost 235,000 arrived via Greece. Well, the refugees arrived from a number of places, but it is still the conflict in Syria that is the biggest driving force. Four million have fled so far and many more are expected to follow still, with the war showing no signs of ending. Well, today's meeting will be an indicator of just how divided Europe is on the crisis. France has said that no country could be exempt from taking in those with the right to asylum. Our correspondent Ben Brown is at a new transit camp in Croatia near the village of Apatovac. This is what he told us a short while ago. Sorry, we just lost the end of Ben there, but obviously a very, very difficult situation on the ground at many, many points in Europe. And those talks will get underway today. Also talks tomorrow by European heads of state. We'll see if any kind of political agreement comes out of that. But let's move on now to other news today. And the head of a US pharmaceutical company has been defending his company's decision to raise the price of a drug by over 5,000%. Turing Pharmaceuticals acquired the rights to the drug Daraprim in August. Well, it's used by AIDS patients. The dose of the drug in the US was increased from $13 to over $750. Here's what the CEO had to say. Well, earlier I spoke to our business presenter, Alice Baxter, for a bit more on all this. To $750. Well, I just want to huge, run through the numbers with you, Gita, because it's one of these facts that there is any need to develop new treatments, that they say this drug... Alice Baxter there. Now, in Pakistan, the execution of a paraplegic prisoner. What are the authorities saying here? Yes, uh, it was a last-minute uh, reprieve for 43-year-old Abdul Basid, who was uh, due to be hanged today at uh, dawn. And uh, just an hour before that, the authorities claimed that because there is no particular rules in the prison rule book about how to execute a paraplegic person, and because all of the uh, sections are pertaining to uh, people who have no uh, physical disabilities, because for the uh, death uh, to for the death sentence to be carried out effectively, the prisoner needs to be stabbed standing on the scaffolding, and Abdul Basid, uh, being a paraplegic, could not do that. So at the last minute, uh, they did not uh, grant a pardon. They postponed uh, the execution, and the authorities said they would be uh, sending the case with its reports back to the Punjab government and to the Supreme and High Court, who have uh, both previously rejected mercy pleas on behalf of Abdul Basid's counsel. He, he wasn't paralyzed when he was sentenced, was he? Just give us the background to this case. Yes, uh, in 2008, uh, Abdul Abbasid uh, was uh, arrested uh, for uh, a murder uh, in, involved in a domestic dispute. Uh, he claims it was an accident. He was transferred from Okara, a uh, city in Punjab, to the Faisalabad jail where he was put on the death row. Now, uh, ever since the uh, government's uh, seven-year moratorium on the death sentence has been lifted since last December um, when uh, there was a massacre uh, of uh, 130 children in a uh, Peshawar army uh, school. So this was the government's effort to to sort of uh, crack down on the militants and as a result the moratorium was lifted so since then almost 239 prisoners who've been on death row have uh, been uh, uh, hanged and uh, uh, Abdul Basit was to be the 240th except that this would be the first time that uh, a paralyzed man uh, would be uh, put up for execution like this he uh, Abdul Basit developed meningitis while in jail and he was paralyzed from the waist down and his lawyers and the medical examiners say that he's been uh, confined to a wheelchair throughout that time and he's been debilitating ever since uh, there have been reports that he's uh, not doing so well in jail and sometimes does not even have access to a wheelchair so his legal aid is now appealing on humanitarian grounds that he's already served seven years of his sentence and he is now a disabled person so um, they have uh, filed pleas with the Lahore High Court with the Supreme Court to grant him mercy and to pardon uh, to grant him pardon and there's also a pardon plea lying with the president of Pakistan uh, to which so far there has been no response and so far the government seems by all intentions uh, to be ready to execute him. 
And, and it was after the Peshawar attack uh, at the end of last year, the beginning of this year, that the death penalty was brought in in Pakistan. But it's been very controversial and, and not a, a huge proportion of those who have been hanged this year have been terror-linked cases, have they? Yes, most of them uh, have actually the, uh, have been convicted in regards to other crimes. Uh, there have been very few terrorism-related uh, um, uh, people who have been hanged. But it seemed that after the uh, Peshawar attacks in December, there was a great public outrage and frustration. And uh, a part of the government's measures, which uh, some believe to be reactionary, was to immediately lift the moratorium on the death sentence in order to get some kind of, uh, you know, uh, satisfaction from the public. So um, uh, it seems that this is the first step that they've taken in an effort to crack down on terrorism. And so far, there's not been much of a public outcry on this also, because people uh, are considering it as at least a step forward in uh, countering terrorism in the country. Although, ironically, not many of the cases right now on death row are terrorism related. Sabah Atiza and Lahore, many thanks. Do stay with us here on BBC World News. Much more to come. Now, around 5,000 people in Germany have joined a demonstration against the record number of asylum seekers arriving in the country. It was organised by an anti-Islamist movement which has recently been gaining support. Jenny Hill has this report for us. This is BBC World News. I'm Geeta Gurumuthi with the latest headlines for you. Now, in Burkina Faso, a deadline for the elite guards who staged the coup to surrender has been and gone. Loyalist troops have asked people to return to their homes before it launches an assault on the military base near the presidential palace. Senegalese the capital of Dhaka for the latest on these events. Um, does it look like there's going to be an agreement, Thomas? Should we be so worried about stability here? I, I was reading that, you know, obviously political instability anywhere is difficult, but the ongoing Islamist fears in many parts of the world, this is, is also a threat here potentially, isn't it? Many thanks indeed. Now, air travel within India is growing fast, but for many it is still too expensive. For anyone who can't afford a flight, you can come close to the real thing, sort of. For less than a dollar, you can take a seat on board an old Airbus parked on the outskirts of Delhi. See, that is my favourite story of the day. I'm off now and I am on Twitter at Geetha Gurumuthi if you want to get in touch. Back tomorrow. See you then. Bye-bye.